Morning, everybody. I'm Simon Constable. Welcome to the news sub. That is a live shot of Independence Square, Kiev, and we have some breaking news out of the Ukraine. The opposition leaders say the protesters' council agrees to the president's offer as long as the interior minister is not part of the new government. Other things that are important that are coming out overnight is that the the deal <clears throat> seems to have been delayed a little bit, and the Polish foreign minister, part of the EU, saying all sides need to remember that compromise means getting less than 100 percent. This is a very fast moving story. Clearly uh, talks are in the final stages and uh, maybe we'll get a deal within a few hours and that will be signed and hopefully it goes on to that. We're going to have that and more right here right now on the morning news up. Well with more on what's going on in this situation in Ukraine. We have former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine and Brookings Institution senior fellow. Um, he joins us now. It's Steve Pfeiffer. There he is. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Happy to be with you. So is, does this, from your experience, look like a deal that could could work if um, if, if the president mm -hmm. and the, the prime minister are out and, we, you know, early elections are, are held? Is that going to be good? Well, it, it looks like there's hopeful news. Uh, it, it, it looks like there are three main elements here. First of all, early presidential elections. Second, a return to the Constitution of 2004, which actually moves some power from the president to the prime minister and back to the parliament. And third, the formation of a government of national confidence. Now, if that holds, that may offer a way forward. Uh, the key thing here is going to be do the demonstrators who have gone through a brutal three days, are they prepared to support it? And if, in fact, the protesters' council is ready to come on board, that also is a hopeful sign. Now, the breaking news is that Ukraine protesters ag agree to the president's offer uh, mm -hmm. under, under certain conditions. Is that why we're getting, I mean, what, what you said, if they've been through a lot, is that why we're seeing EU officials, EU people coming in and saying, look, you're not going to get everything, just, just agree to that this is a good deal, t take it, so that this doesn't get bogged down in recriminations and everything like that? Exactly. I, th I think the EU point is that there is a path forward that involves a negotiated settlement. And if you can't get everybody on that path, you revert to the sorts of pictures that we've, the horrific pictures that we've seen coming out of Kyiv the last couple of days. So everyone's not going to get what they want. But there is a chance for a negotiated settlement that brings Ukraine out of this crisis. And now, we know that Russia won't be, be very happy uh, w with this. They haven't been mm -hmm. big supporters of the protesters. We saw in the past Russia turned off the gas to Ukraine. Uh, that hurt yeah. Europe. Do they do that again and out of spite or something? What, what do you think? What's your sense of this? Well, my, my, my sense is that the Russians, uh, they'll want to see what policies are then adopted by that new government. The, the Russians will not be happy if this leads to a renewal of Russia's effort to push towards uh, the European Union. Uh, with regards to gas cutoff, it seems to me that's a bit of a double-edged sword because although the Russians are trying to build pipelines now to move gas around Ukraine, including through the uh, Baltic Sea and through the Black Sea, they still have to move a lot of gas through Ukraine to get to Europe. So if they try to turn the gas off, it also means cutting off gas to Europe. Now, U Ukraine, a, a former Soviet republic, uh, has representative government now. Uh, some countries mm -hmm. have struggled with implementing representative government in a, in a meaningful way, that one that we would recognize as truly representative. Are they going to make it? Uh, I, I'm actually very hopeful about Ukraine. Uh, They've had problems, to be sure. There's been corruption uh, and such. But if you look at Ukraine since the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, up until the last three or four years, their record on democracy was actually quite good. One of the problems with President Yanukovych is there's been a walk back on democracy in the past three years. But you have in Ukraine a very active civil society. You have a very active opposition. They're real politics. Uh, and, and hopefully Ukraine can move past this crisis and maybe this crisis becomes an energizing point that has people come together and really fix some of the problems that have kept Ukraine back from realizing its potential over the last two decades. Well, let's hope so. And thank you very much for your time. Steve Pfeiffer, senior fellow at the Brookings Institution and former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, we will have ongoing coverage here at WSJ Live and WSJ.com on this very fluid situation back in 30 seconds.